Hi, it's Wednesday. It's May 26th. Hey, it's the St. Joseph Day of the week. And we're going to go back to genealogy, which is spending a lot of time in, in these days and heading into June. So you know this whole list of Joseph family tree. It helps you understand who Joseph is. And you realize the people he comes from. Of course, it all puts many new perspectives into Jesus, seeing the line of the Jews that he comes from. We got to have faith. You see the letters hidden in the pictures? We got to have faith. And we got to realize that God is always trying to draw us into deeper faith. We're going to take at least 13 minutes in this tape. I hope you don't mind, but it's going to require that to get uh, through this little section. Hi, it's Day to Day with St. Joseph. Genealogy can be difficult to cover. Uh, we're going to make the attempt. 42 names in Matthew's genealogy. We've made it back to about 14 of them. We're at the first big turning point going backwards in history. From Jesus, out of Joseph, and back to the Babylonian captivity. Okay, We go back a little more than 500 years before Jesus comes. And the story is, is about Cyrus, the king of Persia, and he loosens the stranglehold of the Babylonians over the Jews, and he's going to allow the Jews to go back to their land because they've been taken away from it. They're going back to a land in shatters. It's all been burned and destroyed in places, and strangers are inhabiting the land. The Persians are still going to be boss. They're still going to be controlling everything. But they permit the Jews to build their worship center again, the temple, a small version of it. And they allow uh, the Jews to establish law again for their own small community. We're talking uh, numbers of thousands of Jews that come back, but it's a small number when you consider what they used to be. But they're coming back into different tribes, different names. And so you go from uh, a guy named Cyrus down to a Darius and then a Xerxes, an Antaxerxes, one, two, three, a Darius two, a Darius three. And the Persian Empire goes from about 538 to 331 BC, okay, when Darius the third is defeated. But in that time, you have the Jews having been purged, having really been chastised through another exile and losing all their land, which was proph prophesied many times if they would not follow the ways of the Lord, then they would lose much. Uh, and they did. But now you have a repentant community coming back in the book of Ezra it talks about the the holy work to get back okay so it says into the province was returning the captives from the exile whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had carried away from Israel to Babylon but now they're starting to come back each man to his own city they returned but such Names leading them as Zerubbabel and Jeshua, Nehemiah, and a bunch of other names you won't recognize except maybe Mordecai, if you know your Bible. And they took a census of the men and, and to all the groups that they belonged. And now they're coming back. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands of people in each group. Now, Nehemiah is a layman. Ezra is a holy man. Nehemiah is a layman. And when they come back, they see how everything is, is in ruins. And at first they weep. You know, they weep over what's going on uh, ahead of them. So the book of Nehemiah talks about his great deeds and his uh, arriving in Jerusalem and just seeing that they have to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, but they also have to 
fight for the land to get it back. It belongs to them, but others have taken it back, and there's lots of people trying to stop them. So with a, a tool in one hand and a weapon in another, they're trying to work and fight off the people who want to, you know, not have the Jews back. Now, these are the ancestors to Joseph, to Jesus. These exiles will definitely shape the history of Israel in her 500-year countdown to Messiah coming. The Messiah is coming because they repent, because they're forming the poor in spirit, the poor on a ween, the people who want to be obedient again to God, who want to practice the commands, okay, who want to be the people of the Lord again. And that was the gift of God to them, but they have blown it big time. I mentioned some kings at the beginning of my uh, reading of the genealogy last tape, and most of those names are guys that didn't do a good job. Josiah is a big hero to them, though. Uh, and he's right at the turn of things, and I'll, we'll talk about him in a second. Um, this is also uh, the period where the book of Job uh, is in this part of history, you know, and, you know, again, it's a story of someone who loses everything, but he's the faithful man. And uh, so multiplied to the post-exile people, faithful people, uh, trying to be faithful, trying to rebuild. So it culminates in Joseph eventually, and he's there in an occupied land of Israel by the Romans, but they have rebuilt the faith somewhat, okay? They rebuilt it. The Jewish faith has still got problems. We'll hear about it with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and and the way the Levites and some of the leaders, the Sanhedrin are acting. You know those stories in the Gospels. Jesus encounters still a Jewish faith that, well, the new covenant is going to come. The Messiah is going to fulfill everything. He's going to provide what the Jews just were just lacking. They couldn't do, but they needed the head, God himself, to be one with the Jewish race and save the day. Uh, the book of Sirach talks about uh, Josiah, and he was uh, the, the name that's right before Jeconiah in our list. I'm not going to read the whole list again this time. Maybe I'll read it next time. The name Josiah is like a blended incense, says the wisdom writer of Sirach. Made lasting by a skilled perfumer, precious is his memory, like honey to the taste, like music at a banquet. He turned to God with his whole heart, and though times were evil, he practiced virtue. Hey, it's, it's a little bit like how Joseph will come out of such a guy like Josiah. Joseph will practice virtue in a time where a lot of corruption, a lot of uh, sin, and plus this big secular power running, running their country called Rome. But it says Josiah, he practiced virtue. Except for David, Hezekiah, and Josiah, they all were wicked, speaking of the leaders or the kings. Not a good assessment, is it? Okay. They abandoned the law of the Most High, these kings of Judah, right to the very end, right to the very end before the Babylonian exile. Okay. I'm reading from Sirach chapter 49. So he gave over their power to others, their glory to a foolish foreign nation, Babylon. Okay who burned the holy city and left its streets desolate, as Jeremiah had foretold, for they had treated him badly, who even in the womb had been made a prophet, to root out, pull down, and destroy, and then to build and to plant again. Sarah keeps telling the history story. Ezekiel. He beheld the vision and described the different creatures of the chariot. So Ezekiel the prophet was, was saying that something new is coming in the Holy, in the spirit of the Lord. And he prophesied it. 
and they didn't know what he was talking about. But they weren't open in the faith, really, to Ezekiel. But prophets often get rejected, as Jesus would say, that he gets rejected too. Prophet isn't welcome in his own hometown, he says in Nazareth. Okay, in Sirach 49, okay, verse 6, Ezekiel described the creatures of the chariot. He also referred to Job, who always persevered in the right path. And then the 12 prophets, may their bones return to life from their resting place gave new strength to Jacob and saved him by their faith and hope. Jacob being a a name for the Holy Land, the place of the Lord's people to live, okay? And then another good name, Jeshua. Uh, In their time, they built the house of God. They erected the Holy Temple. So Jeshua is the one overseeing the rebuilding of the temple and its destroyed spot. They're going to try to rebuild something smaller scale but and then extol be the memory of nehemiah he rebuilt our ruined walls that's the layman okay he restored our shattered defenses and set up gates and bars so you know why jerusalem is a walled city it's to protect the gates are the only way in and then there's big walls and towers to overlook and to defend that's what they did so Sirach 49 describes, you know, some of the names and things happening in this time period, okay? And then they say that when the house of God was renovated, another name, a guy named Simon, okay? Um, the wall gets built. The temple now is 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 uh, in good shape. The reservoir is dug around it. Everything is built to protect. And now the priests can come in their robes and they can have a liturgy and splendor and then there's services of the altar and they begin the sacrifices to the most high so this is the people coming out of the exile and resettling in the holy land and particularly in jerusalem and finally you know they think aaron would be proud a priesthood again in jerusalem Even while it's an occupied land, the Persian leaders uh, were getting to, again, worship, which which was our calling. 